Okay, so here's the decking job. So we're building the decking and then we're gonna build a little pergola on top. The apprentice is just here, getting everything sorted, getting all the tools sorted and everything. And then we're gonna crack on with the decking. So we fixed the timber posts in, going into the ground. So dug down 600 millimeters put the timber posts in, leveled them up, squared them up and we just concreted them in to give it that extra strength as you can see they're not going anywhere as you can see they're not going anywhere as you can see very sturdy and then we're just going to put some membrane down get the outline all leveled up so it's the raised deck in and then we're gonna work off the decking and just start putting the boards down so building this kind of decking is quite simple quite easy and yeah we'll get it most of it done today but yeah enjoy don't forget to like and subscribe okay so first off before we do any work we get a work area sorted and get all our tools organized i would say it's very crucial to get a good work area sorted because it increases productivity and ensures that you have all the correct equipment. Once we have got a work area sorted, we then start the build. After we have installed the posts, we then put our membrane down. Weed membrane is one of the least harmful and most effective measures of protecting your area from weed growth. We are also putting sand on top to hold it in place and to add an extra measure so no weeds get through. Once we have put the membrane down, we level up our first timber joist to act as our datum. In very simple terms, a datum is a point of reference which all points are leveled from. Why you buy two things that do the same? Once we have our datum point, we then can secure and screw our timber perimeter. While screwing up our timber perimeter, it is very important to ensure that the two parallel joists are slightly out of level. This is to create a slightly natural form so rain doesn't build up on the decking. Once we have installed the perimeter, we then measure and cut for the joists. Just a little side note, if you're wondering what's that beautiful tool vest he has on, well the link will be down below. If you do choose to follow the link and purchase this item, the channel will get a small commission, but yeah, check it out for yourself. But let's get straight back into the video. Once we have measured and cut for the timber joist, we then simply place the timber joist in the right location. I have already marked out and measured for the timber joist location. As the general rule, the spaces should not exceed 600 millimeters. Here we are doing a lot less at 400 millimeters. You put yeah, you put yours inside to the line. If the joists are a bit too long, you can simply put them in place and mark underneath, leaving the pencil line in. This should ensure you have a tight fit. Once you have marked, just get the apprentice to cut them.
So this is going to be a quick tip that a lot of people don't do. So when we cut the timber, what we do is we just get the cut end preserver treatment and we just pull it on to treat the ends because obviously the ends won't be treated because we've just cut them off. So we just cut them, treat them and it gives them a lot longer, a lot longer lifespan. So it stops any rot and everything. So that's just a quick tip that we have been doing. So yeah. Once we have put on the cutting preserver, we then install the timber joists. Here we are using nails and screws. Okay, so this is gonna be a quick and simple tip. So, to get your timber boards 100% level, what you can do is just get an off cut piece of timber, cut it square to the timber joist. Okay, raise it up with a little bit of an overhang, pin it on so it's central. Put it on. I've been doing this for all of them. So what you do, knock it down to the timber. Okay, and then you know that is 100% level and square. Okay, so we've got the timber all in line. We fix the timber on top. So it leaves both of my hands free to just level it and nail it. And I'm also putting a screw in as well, just to make sure it's 100% secure because I believe screws are better than nails. And that is done, so. Turn it off. Not the nails through. And it is a hundred percent square. So yeah, and that is a quick and simple way. Thank you. Now fi fix your side as well, Tara. And uh, we all just cut all the noggins. <laughs> Now that we've put all the timber joists in, what we're going to do now is put all of the noggins in. And once we've done that, we're ready to put the timber boards on. Okay, so to keep the cost down, what we're going to do is we've got some offcuts that we're going to use. And this, this timber board comes at 210, so we're going to cut, we're going to rip the boards down to around about 70 millimeters. So we can get three lots out of this board and we're gonna use that for noggins and then we're gonna stagger the noggins. So yeah, I'm just gonna rip this down now to make some noggins. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just adjusting the table saw to rip down the boards to 70 mil, okay? So I'm gonna rip down the 70, the boards to 70 mil now. It was it. Oh yeah. Oh no, it's raining. Get my coat, Tyra. We can man this.
as you can see the weather got a little bit too bad so we did have to stop for a little bit once the rain stopped we got straight back to it and finished off putting in the noggins So this is the new DeWalt power stack I've been using. The model number is DCF850. And it's an impact driver, it's very compact and I'm amazed with how compact it is. A very great tool and the power it outputs is just amazing. So let's see, got this bolt here. Okay, gonna drill it in. And literally it's gone all the way through the timber no problem at all the battery's on a one bar and it's a very compact battery so very amazing my code tj10 for 10 percent off at all tools at data power tools and they're not just stacking the wall they're stacking everything you got festool milwaukee the wall so yeah tj10 for 10 percent off all tools let's get back into it so here are the rafters for the pergola, 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 here are the rafters for the pergola and what I'm doing is I've made my marks, measurements and I'm just cutting out angle for the measurements for the pergola. So I've already done the other end as you can see, let's take a quick look. As you can see I've done one end and i'm about to do the other end we'll get that sorted now and then i will be putting them up in a second once we have cut the timber we then install the beams. We are installing four beams, one at the front and one at the back on each post. The beams are used for carrying the weight of the rafters. They also add more stability to the timber posts. We level up the beams using our spirit level and then secure it with our galvanized nails using our first fixed nail gun. You can do more. Here we are again leveling up the beam and making sure it is square to the parallel beam. We do this by using a combination square, ensuring that both beams are level and at the same height with one another. So what we're doing now is just getting the other timber board on. We've put timber at the bottom and we're just leveling the boards to make sure they're both level with each other, bottom, top and side. So just leveling them both, putting them on, I'll put a piece of timber at the bottom to hold it in place and then just nail it in. And then we're going to do it on the same on the other side.
you then go to the other side and install the beams the exact same way. Again, I am putting timber underneath at the correct height so that the beam has something to rest on while we are fixing it to the post. So today we've got the skeleton, we've got the decking frame down, some of the pergola rope and we've just, it's been a day of measuring, marking and setting out for tomorrow. So we should have all of this finished tomorrow and then it will need to get painted and it will look very, very nice. But yeah, everything will be on tomorrow. So stay tuned for tomorrow. Okay, so here is day two. So we'll be getting everything finished today. All the decking boards will be on, the pergola will be up and it will be looking nice. We have already unloaded the van and we're gonna get straight into it. Okay, so I've just cut the timber uprights for the screening. So we're putting screen in there to make a enclosed type feature. So we're gonna put boards along here going up, boards along there going up. The timber upright is just for extra support in the middle. So gonna have the timber going across here to here. So it makes it an enclosed type of feature and I just think it will look really nice as well. Okay, to put on the rafters, because it's not a proper roof, we're able to use heavy duty timber screws, okay? So these are six inch heavy duty timber screws okay for treated timber you've got the hex bit here and you literally just drill it in yep oh no <laughs> I wasn't able to record and explain everything, but here's a little time lapse of us doing the decking and finishing off the job with a little bit of quick tips. Tip number one, you should have a gap of three to six mil in between each decking board. Tip number two, it is best to use a packer of the desired depth you want so the gaps are even through every board. Tip number three, I'm using my square to keep a consistent straight line to follow for the screws to be drived into. You can also measure and use a straight edge so you have a consistent straight line to follow for the screws to be drove into. cutting and making up some timber battens to go on top of the rafters and to go around the pergola to act as screening. the t 
timber buttons being installed. I've cut, I've cut off timber to create an even gap going along the whole of the button on every button so that they all have the same gap. Okay, so this is the pergola fully finished. So it's been painted. We are gonna build a seating area here, but that's gonna probably be in a, another video. So here's the pergola. We've done screening at the back. We've also put a side piece in to create a little return. So this is what it looks like from the front. Here's the return. And then screening on the side, screening on the back, and a little bit on the side. Okay. The roof is up on the rafters with a little bit of a slope. Okay, and here's it fully finished. Okay, so start to finish, put the posts in, treat the ground, put some membrane at the bottom as well. We've post created all the posts in. Put the decking in, put the roof up, and that create that makes it a lot more stable. So as you can see, there's no wobble, there's no play. It is very, very, very stable because with the roof and it being concreted in, it's very stable. But that is everything, and it's all done now. So yeah, I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe show some support and if you want go check out my other videos thank you and goodbye